All right, so you want to program your motors. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you wire everything correctly. You've probably done a lot of the electrical work or had someone else do it. So you want to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. The main thing to do is to make sure that you've got your, um, obviously your positives, positives and negatives correct. Uh, so if you look at the circuit board, what you'll see here is you've got your brown here, your blue here, and it's repeated here. Brown on the right, blue on the left. If you get confused, down here you'll see a positive and a negative. The positive is always associated with the brown cord coming from your 150 millimeter motor. If you're hooking this onto landscape cable, just make sure that you're still running from the brown line. The other thing to note is right here, when you start programming your motor, you wanna make sure that number four is switched on. Number four is your internal temperature sensor built into the circuit board. So you wanna have that turned on because you're gonna set what that setting is during your programming. If you wanna turn it off after you've programmed everything, that's fine. Just make sure you have it on during programming. Right here is your power. So on all of these, you have very small screws. On these small screws, you wanna make sure that you have a screwdriver with a small enough tip. These are flathead here and Phillips on these down here. These are just set screws, so you're just gonna turn them on, or you're just gonna turn them to tighten down on the actual wire itself. Then they plug in. This one is oriented differently than the other ones. Don't lose this plug-in because these don't go inside here. It won't let you. So, what you wanna do first off is, I'm gonna actually turn on the power now, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So, you wanna hook up your power to your transformer and then obviously hook up from the transformer into the actual receiver. For this style motor, we're gonna be doing a 24 volt transformer, which you can see right here, it says 24 volt. If you're using a 12 volt motor, you need to make sure you have a 12 volt transformer. So this one's a 24 volt, and it's gonna power two motors with this receiver. The first thing you wanna look at when you have these transformers in your hand is right here. Before you feed power to it, you wanna make sure that this is flipped to 115 volts. By default, they have, they are set to 230 volt. You wanna make sure that it's set to 115 volt, otherwise the transformer will not work. So once you're on 115 volt, you'll hook up your lines. L is line or your positive, N is negative, and this symbol right here is your land. You'll tie those together. You'll tie your leads coming off here. You have three positive options and three negative options. So I've got a positive wire here, negative wire here. Those are fed into my positive side here, negative side here. What you'll then do is, what I like to do is I will feed power to the transformer and then I will plug it in. So you'll know your transformer is on and working when the green light right there is on. If it is not on, an easy mistake is to have the L and this symbol switched. I've seen people put this in for L because I think it means land and that symbol is power. So just make sure you have these two lines correct. Now you've got your power feeding to this plug. You're gonna then plug it in. You're gonna watch the circuit board light up. You can see it just lit up. And now what you'll see then is this S is gonna be blinking. It means it's in standby mode. So now you're ready to start programming your motors. First thing you want to start with are your remotes. Whether you're using a TELUS remote or a Situo remote, you want to make sure that you put yourself on the channel you want to be on. To change channels, you tap it once to find the channel you're on, tap it again to switch channels. In this case, I'm going to, I'm going to program these remotes and the motors to channel one and channel two. And I'm going to use this remote. So I've double checked that I'm on channel one. I will then program. So right here, in order to make sure you program the, the motors, you need to turn on the program setting. You do that by holding on to the program button. You'll see them both flash, let go. Your first motor will jog. If you want to switch to the other motor to program it, you simply tap the button, you'll hear it jog. To switch back to, I'll switch back to the first motor, start programming it. It jogged, we're good to go. I'm on channel one. I'm gonna start the process first 
by telling the motor, this is the remote I wanna use. And I do that by pressing the up and down button. It will do a long jog, in, out. All right, so now you can see it's blinking. It's saying program, you're ready to program your first motor. What you wanna start with is to say, I wanna make sure that the up and down buttons are going the direction that I want. You'll see that the motor itself is extending when I press up. That is not what I want. The extending of the motor is closing your system. You wanna make sure that up is opening your system. It's intuitive to your customer and it helps with the sensors that they'll use later on. If you wanna reverse your direction, you hold the my button. It will jog. Now when I press up, the motor goes in. When you know that it is going the correct direction, you'll press up and down simultaneously. Once it starts moving, you're gonna just set the remote down, let it go. What it's doing is finding its limits. The reason why is because this receiver does not know how far this motor can go out and how far it can go in. So it's trying to find out what that is. So the motor has gone all the way out. It has gone all the way back in. It's currently done in finding its limits. It's still in the program mode. The one thing you wanna note on this whole system, because it's finding its limits, you wanna make sure that you know if the power goes out to the receiver. So power cuts out to the receiver, the receiver no longer knows where the motor's at in its throw. So if the power goes out and the customer is trying to operate the system, it will only go one direction until it finds where it's at, either all the way in or all the way out, and then the customer will be able to operate it normally. So one of the things we did when we first started was to switch on channel four. What you're gonna do right now is you're gonna tell the motor what it should be at in its throw when it's too cold. So let's say it's 20 degrees out, where is the motor gonna go? When it's that 20 degrees out, the motor will go to that spot and it will stop. The, mo the remote will no longer work, the motor will no longer work. So you wanna make sure that that position is where the customer wants it. In this case, the customer is gonna want it fully extended. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fully extend the motor. If I let go, it will stop. So bring the motor all the way out to that position on where you want it. Right now, we're gonna bring it all the way out. So you'll see I'm holding on to it. This is flashing blue. That's saying that the remote is communicating to the motor. If it stops while you're holding on to it, it's just because it, for whatever reason, wants to pause in the process of going out. Just let off and click the button again and it will keep going along its process. Once it's all the way out, so in this case, this is my ice limit. So when it's super cold out, this is the way the customer wants it. I'm fully extended. Once I'm in that position, what I do is I hold down on the my button, the middle button. The motor will jog. Now you need to finish programming. So on the back of this remote and on the back of this remote, you press this program button and that is to tell the motor, I am no longer programming. My unit is exactly the way I want it. And you can see that the flashing program button on my first motor or S1 is now off. So I am no longer programming any of the motors and one is set exactly the way that I want it. So once you've got one set where you want it, you need to then move on to the second motor. First, make sure that you switch to channel two. If you don't do this, you will then program both of the motors on the same channel and you'll have to go through a process to then add them to their own separate channels. So it's recommended that you separate them during the program phase. Once you're on channel two, you will then hold down on the program button again. You will see them flash, you'll let go. It will think you wanna program motor one first, but you've already done that. You just wanna move on to programming motor two. You're gonna follow the exact same steps that you did before, which is, to hold this on channel two, you're telling the motor, I wanna be on this channel of this remote. You're going to then make sure your direction is correct. 
that up is in. In this case, it's wrong. So I hold my, reverse it. Up now brings it in. And then you're going to press up and down so that it then finds its limits all the way out, all the way in. And then we'll move on to the temperature again on this one. So the second motor has now gone all the way out and all the way back in. So we're ready to set the setting when it is below freezing, also called the snow and ice position. So when the temperature is below freezing, your motor will automatically go to that spot. So if your louvers are fully open, the temperature drops below freezing, the motor will go all the way to its preset limit, in this case, all the way closed, and then you will no longer be able to operate the system. If you are installing one of these in the winter, you want to make sure that the receiver is either in a warmer location when you are hooking everything up and making sure that the unit operates correctly, or you switch off channel four. Anytime you're making a change here, meaning you're either switching on or switching off channel four, you need to cut the power to the receiver. So you would unplug this, turn off four, plug it back in, and then you could operate as normal. Again, when you cut the power to a receiver, it will not know where the motors are at. So you're gonna need to let it go all the way one direction or the other in order for it to find where it's at and then operate it normally. Okay. So now we're going to set this motor all the way to its out limit for the temperature setting. So we're gonna bring it all the way out for its temperature setting and we're gonna fix it there. Same system we did before, you're gonna hold the button until it goes all the way out. If it stops anywhere along its travel, you're just gonna let off the button, click down on the button again until it goes all the way out and you know that it's fully extended. Right there it stopped, I'm gonna push it again. So the motor is fully extended. I am now going to say yes by clicking the my button. This is where I want it to go when it's too cold out. Hold the my button, it jogs. I then say I'm done programming, press the program button. Now, you have fully programmed both motors for your system. The only thing I want to add, when you are building the system, you want to hook the motor up in a fully extended position. So, if your temperature setting is further in, let's say your temperature setting your customer wants is something like this, then you need to make sure before you go out on the site, after you've programmed everything, that you fully extend the motor, so that way you don't get out there with a half extended motor and you now need to hook it up to power in order to extend it in order to finish the build. So fully extend your motors and then go out. Two more things to note. One, on your remote, if you want both of the units to be on channel three, for example, so that the customer can click a button and both bays open simultaneously, what you would do is go to your first channel, you would press the program button, it will jog. That is to say, I'm still adding or semi-programming it. You would switch to the third channel, press the program button. That tells it I want that on channel three. So if I now operate the motor, you can see it is operating on channel three. You repeat the same process on channel two. I hold the program button. I go to channel three. So now if I'm on channel three and I press the up button, for example, both motors operate simultaneously. Press the down button, both motors close simultaneously. One more thing. If you have a problem, meaning that you have somehow messed up the programming, whether you skipped a step or you don't know where you're at and the motor doesn't seem to be wanting to listen to the remote, just go back to the beginning. So in order to reset this circuit board all the way back to the beginning, that you have the program button here, what you do is you press that and you hold it until all of the lights flash on here. So 
you'd press it, hold it, you can see it flashing. They jog, all of the lights flash. You've now reset the um, circuit board itself. It's no longer programmed. I had it programmed to channel three, doesn't do anything. So you'd go back to channel one, start with motor one and do it all over again.